What's going on, everybody? It's your host here, Daryl D. Freighter, and welcome to the Urban Entrepreneur Podcast, hashtag Let's Talk About It show, where we talk about different entrepreneur topics. Today, we have a great panel of entrepreneurs in the alcoholic beverage industry. Uh, we're going to talk about the different challenges in that industry. This episode's title is called Drink or Drank. We're going to go through it, and we're going to learn a lot about this industry. If you're an entrepreneur or an inspiring entrepreneur looking to get into this industry, definitely check out this episode. It's going to be great. So what we're going to do, we're going to go around the panel, and we're going to introduce the people here that we have on this call. Uh, we're going to go in the order. Uh, we're going to go Frank, Joe, Scott, Covillo. I can't even pronounce your name, bro. Coviello. It's okay, Coviello. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yellow. And then uh, we're going to go right into um, the conversation. Frank and Jessica, you can start. Hi, everyone. My name is Franklin Tapia. And I'm Jessica Krakow. And we're Electric Coco. And we are a coconut water uh, spirits mixer. Um, so coconut water that's made, uh, you know, perfectly sweetened, has all the health benefits, but made to mix with any type of liquor of your choice. Nice, nice. And where are you guys from? So we're from North New Jersey. I'm from Pasig, New Jersey. And I'm from Little Falls, New Jersey. So great. Yeah. Hey, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, Scott Krieger, CEO with Wine Best Bottle. Uh, we're a luxury lifestyle brand built around wine and wine experiences. So in a nutshell, we're you just the taking the entire world around and, and applying wine clubs and access to wine clubs um, through wines that most people don't even know exist, whether it be the south of France to Oregon to Canada, Thailand, and between. And uh, we do that marketing through also uh, travel experiences. And um, we have a media and a publishing side to our company. Some uh, books will be coming out, travel, wine, food pairing, with some really game-changing technology as it relates to the travel side of our business. Um, then actually we have a couple television shows for global distribution about wine. Um, so a lot of things that we're doing, we have our full launch in two weeks. So anything that's on our website now is just a screen and a show that will be unpolling the veil and launching worldwide and uh, distribution of wine into 51 countries around the world and adding more. Nice, nice. Thanks for being on the call, man. That's a great flavor. Thanks, Daryl. Coviello? Yes, great afternoon, everybody. So my name is Mr. Coviello Salinas, and I am the president of Amor Genevieve. This is a brand that is one of the first established blue wines in the world. This was quite, a, quite an idealistic way of looking at developing something revolutionary in the world, but also changing the game when it comes down to how the traditional wines are viewed, uh, red, white, and rosé. So it's a, uh, it's quite a shift. So we're looking to bring it to global markets. Uh, we also started in uh, Europe, but we're looking to bring it into the United States, specifically New York, November 25th. Nice, man. And let's see if we can swing back to Joe. I know you're, we wasn't here you a little earlier. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, you're good, brother. All right, good. I'm Joe Cruz Jr., founder of Yave Tequila. We created the first ever all natural flavor series. So we have a Blanco, Reposado Añero. We have a mango, coconut, and jalapeno. And the slogan says where I'm from. The slogan's jumped up in Harlem, made down in Mexico. So I wanted the world to know I came from nothing. I've, I've been in the game for over 25 years, got tired of making other people rich. So I walked away from a lot, a lot of money. I was offered multi million dollar deal after multi million dollar deal. Understood my true value at that point, walked away and built something from scratch, and now we're here. Pleasure to meet you guys, too, and to all you guys out there, you guys on the, the, the podcast with me, respect you guys. You know what it takes to really get something done, not to talk about it and get it done. So respect to you guys, first of all, and behind the Sunday. So respect for that, guys, seriously. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. All about action. Great, great. We're going to jump right into this. So my first question I want to ask this panel is, what are some challenges – that you had entering the uh, industry. Uh, we all know that the alcoholic beverage industry or any beverage industry in general is actually a hard market to crack into. So what ways did you, you know, make your way into the industry and establish yourself? Let's start with, uh, there's a, Jose, let's, Joe, you want to start with that one? 
Yeah, I mean, I'll start for so long. Um, again, I've been in the game for over 25 years, so I've worked with every major distributor. I've worked in all three teams of liquor. So I worked in liquor stores, and I owned the liquor stores I worked in. I worked in distributors, and I ran distributors. I worked in with suppliers. I ran suppliers, and it was time to walk away doing my own thing. So the biggest challenge for me personally was knowing my worth and it's not making these other people so much money. Because my name actually has a lot of records under it. Um, my dad is number one um, salesman. I'm not going to name other people's brands because they're walking into these other liquors. But my dad runs one liquor company. My godfather runs one. My uncle runs one. And another one of my uncles actually built a brand throughout the world. So I've always had the, the knowledge and the people around me. But the one thing I knew I never wanted was to be the CEO of another man's company. So it was just about knowing the time was right. Going all in, I mean, nine months later, with less money than most people have ever started with, we're in three markets, New York, New Jersey, Florida, and we have an online platform we created to do shipping for a dollar all over the country. So just a lot of things. But my biggest challenge was just knowing it was time. It was just waking up that morning and saying, I'm done. And I, I held on. I knew the timing was perfect. I may have held on a little bit too long, but I needed to know I was doing everything right on my side because we didn't, I didn't have the money that most people have. I had the wherewithal, the knowledge, the connections, and the heart. I mean, I'm here talking to you guys on a Sunday, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the, worst, it's the hardest thing, though. I'm glad you made that leap. Oh, definitely. Anyone else want to add on to that? Challenges of getting started? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say something about that. So I think, you know, it's pretty obvious that the liquor, alcohol, wine, you know, in and itself is a very saturated market. Like how many brands are out there? Like how many types of liquor there is? Um, and that is a huge barrier, you know, like how do you break through all of that? How do you get your name out there? Um, but I think, you know, with that challenge, that's how you, uh, you have to ensure that you have something that's different, whether it's, you know, the brand that's representing your liquor, whether it's the type of, of product uh, you're offering like coconut water you know what it's what's something different that you can um, bring to the industry to really like step out and separate yourself from everyone that's out there now there i'll go if, uh, i was having a little bit of an audio problem sorry if i had any background noise but did you just you call my name yeah go ahead scott you know, I think the beverage industry is one that is like a lot of other major industries around the world. And I really echo what I comment just there before of uh, the importance of getting into a market and differentiating yourself and telling a story. And one of my mentors in the beverage industry is uh, Bernie LaCruz. And one thing he preached to me time and time again, it was one of those sayings that I really, it took a long time to really let it soak in and, and but it's this it's really simple as scott or anyone you can make the best product in the world but if nobody knows anything about it it means nothing and really starting with marketing in mind and that goes back to um how i started in the wine business which uh i got one of those shots to at a very early age to build one of the top wineries in the world and learn from a master and a couple bottle shock here uh, and to me, what the, what the industry, the beverage industry is, it's something a lot bigger than all of us. It's a community in the wine industry, the beer industry, tequila, um, coconut water. We're all talking about something that's a, it's community. It's that substance of life. Why are we most made up of is liquids. And, and when you start looking at being able to celebrate life, a good shot of tequila, stay away from you. Uh, because on the tequila, Jose, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk afterwards, but the blue wine, the coconut water, we're talking about substances yeah. of life here, people. And I'm going to talk from wine because I'm the wine guy on this call. And, and I'm going to use blue wine as an example of it. Imagine a great meal with some blue wine, coconut water, all these things. Great meal with family, friends around the table. Tell me that there's nothing more priceless in life than just that experience and having conversation and having community. We're all in the same area. And this is another one I would add, is we all rise on the same side. Because what is the community that we're in? It's so much bigger. It's the hospitality, the hotels, the busboys, the chefs, the restaurants, the nightclubs. That's what we are as a beverage industry. We're a part of a community that is the intricate foundation of, I believe, all that we are. And the best example of that is sitting around a table. And guys, if we have to get together in real life, I'll bring the wine. 
<laughs> and I want some blue wine too. Tequila? Like no, stay away from it. <laughs> well, because you haven't had the right tequila, that's why. You trust me, mine is different. It's too many problems. <laughs> if I meet you now, I'm going to have to have to. You have it's to. not if. Yes. I'm going to have to have some tequila with you. <laughs> It doesn't matter if you're um, coconut water, some electric cocoa, right. and you're all drinking right. away now. Perfect. Yes. Exactly. exactly. That's what I like to hear. It's going to be a party, man. Hey, look, actually, Frank and Jessica are having a party for their, uh, for their, for their launch for, of, their, of their new product. So, hey, we can all meet there. We can, uh, definitely try each other, everybody's product. I don't have right, a problem. Yeah. I'll try all your products, and, I'll, and I have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> So where's yeah. everybody located, Daryl? Or is everyone close to New York and I'm the odd guy out? Yo, where are you? you yeah, everyone's pretty much New York, Jersey. New York, yeah. New York City, Harlem, New York. Yeah, New York. Yeah, oh. man. So, so hey, hey, Scott, you, you got to fly in or something, man. But, hey, you know what? I may, I may just, I may never go home. I, I'm going to be home for Thanksgiving, though. So, yeah, Daryl, I'll talk to you offline. Sounds good, man. <laughs> Coming back. I wanted to touch on something that you brought up about community. And in the wine, liquor industry in general, there's a strong community and culture that is actually pretty interesting. And, and it seems like it's something that you have to crack your way into. Because even at the, the wine event, wine tasting event that I met uh, Coviello at with uh, Gary V, that event, it brought me into that culture and made me realize that, whoa, this thing is, is, is much more different on the inside than when you're just on the outside viewing into it. And I want to speak on the culture yeah. of the liquor industry and some things that people that may not know if they're outside of the culture. So w what are some things that you guys see mm -hmm. uh, being on the inside of the industry that people on the outside may not know? And if they want to get in the industry that they probably should know, so that way they have an easier transition getting into the field. I mean, I'll, I'll say something mm -hmm. on that, to be honest. Um, one of the things when it comes to that, a lot of people in this game, I'm going to say, as nice as I can, they all look the same and come from the same backgrounds. So when you have somebody that comes from an urban background or somebody that comes from something that they're not used to, it's intimidating to them. And I found out over time because it was me and a bunch of, again, people who look the same. I was the person that stood out in every aspect because I was just different. But I knew as much as they did on the liquor side. I had companies paying for years to just keep learning and learning and learning. And you'd be a fool if you didn't take the free classes and I didn't take the travels that they offered me. So when it comes to that, the liquor world is also small. I mean, I've seen a lot of guys in the past. We've only launched in December, so we're still brand new. But I've gone to some of the events, and I've seen the same guys that I worked with 10, 15 years ago working with other companies. Or yeah. guys who I trained and now I'm running another company that's my competition. So it's a small world. Mm -hmm. and like everybody knows each other in this game for the most part. And if they don't know you, it's on you to be known. To a degree, like they know what I'm doing exactly. now. I tried to hide it from, yeah. but it, the brand's out there now. So it's it's a very small world, yeah. in the good, and I'm glad I, I don't know these people that you have today. So it's it's becoming a smaller world in a good way. But I've started working with liquor brands in the scene, which I, I have a few partnerships going on. What the big companies do is they they buy you out, and they buy your brand, so they can have one of everything. So I'm starting that at my own mm -hmm. level. So now I have rums and whiskeys on the side that we deal with. So when we do events, we dominate the events, no matter yeah. who comes in. So it's, it's just a different way of thinking, man. Wow, that's, that's so interesting because, you know, that you is, that's see, very, that's so very many brands out there, you, 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 don't, you don't know, like, wow, it's still a small world in that one industry and that everyone can with each other. And like you said, that all the big guys are buying out all the little guys so they control all the power and the, and the wealth pretty much. So that's crazy. So, like, being a small guy in the market, that's a challenge right there in itself. And, and that goes with almost all the businesses across industries uh, where it's kind of hard for a little guy. Getting started, and it, it's really hard to succeed and, and achieve because you know those barriers to entry um, when you're a little guy. So definitely appreciate you mentioning that, uh, Coviello. You wanted to add something to that? Yeah, yeah. You know, when it comes down to uh, what he said about people fearing first, like fear is one of those things that will hinder you to not even go into many different marketplaces, not just the liquor industry. Like a lot of people fear first of all just the reporting of the TTB and the FDA and all of the paperwork. And then if you're doing out of the country um, distributions and things of that nature, you gotta, you gotta look at a whole other plethora of regulations that can really, really stop people from even wanting to pursue it. Um, you know, I, I've, been in, I've been in the financial world for all my life as well. 
And that is also kind of an equivalent of the wine business or the liquor business because it's like you have so many different regulations and so many people that try to hinder you and stop you from getting to where you need to get to. And it doesn't really matter how much knowledge you have. It's really about the people that you know and connect with and network with. That is the most important thing when it comes down to any industry is networking and being able to organize those people that you meet and be able to reach out to them and follow up and make sure you're helping their business just as much as they're helping yours. It's very important. And um, just not to have fear in anything you do. Because, uh, you know, if I would have had any type of doubt and fear to uh, be the first one to actually construct this blue wine properly, I would have missed the, I would have missed the boat, you know? And, uh, you know, it, it really comes down to having the plan utilized and being able to just keep motivating yourself to bring it home. And then when you have it, protect it. That's also extremely important, protecting all of your ideas and assets. Yeah, you know, that's so great that you went into protecting your ideas and assets because I was going to go into that and see, like, what are you guys all doing in terms of your brand, your um, intellectual property, you know, anything that you have in regards to uh, branding and assets of, within your business? I know for you, uh, Blue Wine is, is unseen. No one knows about this. This doesn't exist prior mm -hmm. to taking the time to invest into that. So what are you going to do to protect yourself? And what are everyone on this panel, what are you going to do to uh, protect your brand and what you're building? And how should people looking to get into this industry think about their branding strategy and protecting their brand as they enter the business? Daryl, I just want to go off of what Coviello said as well. And, and um, also um, Joe is, you know, one of the things of the, in the culture, and I want to tie it back to quick is I think one of the really important portions of, of, the, of the liquor um, wine the um, beer industry is drinking responsible and in and, and that inner culture at that high level there's a lot of aspects really is is drinking responsible it's not to get drunk it's to add to life um, and a lot of um, and Coviella you had my number two one back to that was no fear and I just really want to tell you I, I wholeheartedly think that that is is and this is going back to um, um, Franklin and Apia I pronounced your name correctly we're also talking about is is outperforming people big brands can't, they can't get personal they can't get down they can't get dirty and they can't get in the trenches and really connect with people um, it's about the story it's about the grit and I, one thing that, well, that we'll all agree on this, and I just use this as a reference point, but um, I'm a big John Wayne. John Wayne and True Grit. But I like the new one with Jeff Bridge. Really, what is True Grit? There are two things on it. You can't take the integrity out of grit. Um, or you, take, you can't take grit out of integrity. And in me, that vision at that last of the, that movie where um, Rooster Cogburn is the leash is in his mouth. He's got six guns going and he's going after <laughs> guys in a march. And you have to have that kind of fear. You have to burn the ships, take the community, and networking must, number one, if you take 10 things that are in entrepreneurialism, three of those top 10s are going to be networking, networking, networking. It's not Absolutely. what people to you know. And doing life in a win-win situation. There's a reason people come into your life. There's a reason why every single one of these people are on the call tonight. And I know ways I can help you guys. Not only anything of it, but I think there's also ways we can synergize and together we can grow as a brand. And so those are just some of the things I wanted to add to it. And quickly on the IP, yeah, get your IP locks, but know how to do that. The difference of IP locked in America and IP locked internationally. A lot of ways to do it. And that's a big question, but an important one, and one that I wouldn't even want a jailhouse lawyer that. I would you know I'd get a custom grid attorney that knows how to do that and protect your brand. Yeah. So um, that's my 10 cents. Definitely, bro. Great advice, man. I really love it. Does anyone else yeah, want to and, answer? And that? really, yeah, it, it's really, it's really, um, you, you got to look at it this way. The most important things when it comes down to protecting your brand, like, you, you want to protect your, your copyrights, of course, uh, any type of verbiage you're putting in, like uh, if it's like, um, 
you know, stay thirsty, my friends. You know, you want to make sure that's, that's licensed. Uh, if you take a personal picture, um, make sure make sure you copyright that as well because that's very important. They have uh, one of my my companies that I used to work for back in the day. They put something up on one of their websites four years ago, and they had a licensing company actually come and sue them because they put a picture that was um, I think it portrayed a building with with uh, uh, the company's name on it. And uh, four years later, you know, they come and sue them. So you got to really understand who's, who's um, uh, uh, marketing you're using. And you got to make sure the people that are around you understand that they also know that this is a very, very tedious, very, very specific business that people will try to um, take you out of your element and sue you for everything. Because remember, we are in liquor and spirits and also beverages. So we have a very, very large responsibility who we're touching. So yes. protection of, of yourself, your assets, your companies, your corporations, your, your, your formulas, like it, th those are extremely important. That's just either getting a utility patent or getting a very, very good lawyer to make sure everything that you're not seeing, you're also backed by that lawyer because that's what you're paying them for. And you also have to have a good team too to be your eyes and ears when it comes down to the field. No, definitely, man. Great points, man. That, that actually gives me some things to, to jump off into my to my next question uh, in regards to how you market yourself and how you sell your assets or how do you sell your value prop to your, your customers. Uh, a quick story. I was just listening to the uh, audio for uh, Brian Tracy's uh, Psychology of Selling, and he gave an example of how Smirnoff became a multi-billion dollar uh, uh, alcoholic beverage company um, with, with their vodka when vodka wasn't a popular drink uh, in America. They were able to uh, take their competitive advantage of the fact that you couldn't smell the alcohol in your breath after drinking their liquor. And that was a huge competitive advantage that they built their marketing brand off of and were able to uh, use the slogan, it takes your people away. And they were able to craft their message in a way that added value to the end user because they jokingly even said that like, oh, people bought it and it became a multi-billion dollar company because people would drink it during their lunch break and come back to work and no one would know that they were drinking alcohol. <laughs> and it's like, how <laughs> are you able to craft your message to sell your company and highlight your value prop? And what's going to get people to buy your brand? Um, if you guys like, what are your value props and how can... Um, people looking to get in the industry start to craft or think about their value proposition and what they add to the customer that isn't already on the market that differentiates them and allows them to grow as a brand. I mean, I, I'll take the lead on this one. Um, something I learned, I've been around a lot of powerful people in liquor and powerful people in liquor. I've been very fortunate. But one thing I learned from everybody was simple. Don't overthink it. So when it came to me, I'm the urban kid. I mean, I'm born and raised in Harlem. I, I built brands in the urban market and with all due respect to all the markets, People step into the urban market to grow. Most brands, they go into rap videos. Most brands go to the artists in our world. They pay millions upon millions to get into the market. I grew up in it, so I don't have to pay anybody. I'm hanging out in studios with these guys. I'm going to listening sessions. I'm going to guys' movie shoots. It's natural for me. So I'm the guy that they relate to because when I walk in, they're like, so this is really a brand now, Joe? I'm like, yeah, this is all mine. And the guys feel comfortable, and they want to post, and they want to do more. So it's really sticking with what you know best. But if you want to try to um, step across the pond and step to people they don't know and Again, just don't overthink it. Just keep it really simple. It's, I, I can't stress that enough. Everybody wants to be a brand that they're not, but you have to go where you know best and just build upon that. Like, this is what I know best. I don't know how to fake urban. I was born and raised in the urban market. I woke up in the urban market. I go to sleep in it. And I've seen brands come into events that I was at. I saw that them come in and spend fifteen, twenty thousand for the same party. And I brought cases into my friends and we still dominate. I still had a DJ in my corner when they paid twenty thousand dollars. So, I mean, just perfect your market. Just choose what you know best and then just dominate. Mm. So, if I had to ask you, Joe, what is your value prop? How, what differentiates you uh, and makes you better than any other vodka out there? Well, first of all, there's two things with tequila that are major part. Um, I'll talk about that. You have the burn and then you have a hangover the next day. I took two years solving that problem. I filmed a documentary from the second it popped into my head to nowadays. I'm showing people, the reason there's a key on this bottle, I'm the first ever mango tequila ever created, because it is the first, 
I'm gonna give people access to our world. I'm gonna show people a different sides from the liquor brands. And a lot of people like to bring you into the marketing later on. I've done it from the beginning. So like I made a coconut flavored tequila. So we'll talk about that, guys. It's your coconut water. The reason I did the coconut is for my mother. Single mother raised me. She did it. Her favorite fruit was a coconut, so I did coconut in her honor. Mango exists because my grandmother died before I made it. Her favorite fruit was mango. So I created the first genius in my heart. And jalapeno was for my dad, who's a big rig in the liquor game, and he always cooked with, like, spicy things, and it made sense. So I follow my heart, and it's been working nonstop. So I, 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 I've been infusing all, all my, like, mental into my heart. Like, I just roll with that. I know the game very well mm. been my whole life. And I, just follow, I, know I just follow my gut. A lot of people don't do that enough. A lot of people, again, don't overthink it. I'm going to stress that as much as I can. Just yeah, go with what great. feels right, because at the end of the day, you're never wrong. Even if it doesn't work, you know now that it won't work. So then yeah, you go on to the next thing. Business. That's some next level marketing. Like, when you put a story to your message, the story is going to sell and get people who are they're buying much quicker than just selling a pretty product. Like, when you have a story mm -hmm. with emotion behind it, that's when you really connect with people. And that's what you're doing with your story, man. I respect that. Hey, Daryl, I'm actually going to hop on that as well, because I think um, really the electric cocoa comes from my background as well. And I think, it, you know, exactly what Joe was saying, um, I'm, I'm, I was born and raised in North New Jersey, Pasig, New Jersey, and I'm from the Dominican Republic. My family's from the Dominican Republic. And a lot of times what we, my whole family does is they drink coconut water with their alcohol all the time. It's just very common in the Latin culture. And um, it's just the way that we, that's just what we knew. However, whenever we would go into like liquor stores, clubs, or bars, we could never find coconut water anywhere at all. It was like so hard for us to find it. So our culture wasn't represented inside of that, inside of that scene. Only when you went into a very, very deep Dominican place that you could find that, um, that you could find, and you could, and actually what you would find is coconut juice. You wouldn't find coconut water. So what we did is we, um, we actually, uh, you know, took that experience and we have created a company that's focused on bringing, you know, the electrolytes that come from the coconut water and allowing you to mix that with whatever alcohol you particularly like. Um, to really try to drive home the experience that Dominicans had known for a very long time, which is drinking um, and staying hydrated while you drink. And then I would say the difference then between us and any other coconut water that you'd find at the grocery store um, is our formulation. So we know that it has to be just sweet enough to, you know, to taste with the liquor because it needs to be a little bit stronger to just take that bite out, you know, whether it's with whiskey or tequila or rum. Um, so we're different from the coconut waters that you'll find at the grocery store, but then we're different from the coconut juices that you could possibly find, you know, at a bar club because we have all the health benefits. So it's similar, like finding your little niche and like that, that little bit of a following that will be familiar with it. And then just growing that into something even bigger, um, is really important. Yeah, no, Jessica actually comes from, uh, we both work in Fortune 500 companies. So we're kind of breaking off of Fortune 500 companies to try to do our own thing right now. And Jessica actually does marketing for one of the biggest companies in the entire world. And, um, and with her experience, she's leveraging that to really bring that forth for the customer and helping that be the driving force forward for our marketing strategy. I mean, you probably could talk better than, to that than I can, Jessica, but yeah. No, but I think, like, similar to, like, what Joe was saying, like, we've been doing this so much for other people, and we know what we know, so let's do it for ourselves and find the right people, your right audience um, that wants your product, and then from there, it'll it'll grow naturally. Like, you won't even need to force it. Like, it'll happen. Definitely. Great, great input. I, I really appreciate that. It, it is unique that you guys have identified exactly how you're going to add value to the market. You're not just copying what's already out there. You're finding where your need is and where the market need is, and you're and you're solving a problem that you know that you personally are looking to solve, and 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 you figure out the solution to it, and that's how you build strong businesses based off a problem that exists, and you're the solution. Mm -hmm. Definitely, right. thank you, Scott and uh, Coviella. We want to hear your your value prop, or what what ways do you add value or differentiate differentiate yourself from anyone else on the market? Scott, you want to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Please. No, go ahead, Scott. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I would just say that a lot of it just always goes back to marketing and storytelling. And, and um, 
um, you know, I think one of the really big trends within the branding that's going out there is really building experience in behind it. Um, and, and really just having that value proposition in such a way that your early adapters really become evangelists and that you provide so much value to them um, beyond what, the, what they're experiencing, the, uh, whether it's coconut water, wine, tequila, whatever, that they're associating themselves with something bigger than that. And one of that is really going back to experiential travels and even a lot of either other brands outside of it is really establishing yourself and understanding your brand. Um, you're not, um, you're not a widget. You're not a, you're not a, a, you know, you're something bigger than that as you stand for it. And I think one of the really cool things that I'm seeing as a, as a trend is giving back and everything else that was said, I agree with a hundred percent. And it's such a big question, but one of those is like 1% for the world where you're, you're, you're baking right into it of doing social good and having that social entrepreneurialism is a way of really adding value. It's how you're going to connect with your target market. I love the story about the coconut and uh, being able to have that in the bar. And now you've taken tequila and you've made it a really healthy drink because of the coconut and it wasn't healthy enough already. So it's just, it's, it's the blending of all of those worlds and value for me, it's always connecting to a brand. And I have so much more value when I know the story of the people behind it that are making it, making it three dimensional, making it real. I mean, I've got stories of wine producers you know, that escaped Nazi-occupied Germany, a family that secretly bootlegged wine into Al Capone so he could get the wine during Prohibition, to, you know, how the wine, Thai wine industry was formed and created. It was a guy that was a Buddhist monk, a Jewish rabbi in Jerusalem, and the guy that invented the selfie is how the Thai wine industry boomed. And I know as crazy as that sounds, for me it's always about the story. And when I know the person making it, I want to support them, no matter what. Um, that is a brand evangelist. That's getting your story out there. And I know everyone on this call has, has a great story and there's people that resonate with that. So that's my value addition. Nice. And uh, yeah, you know, um, a lot of people nowadays, you know, want to be entrepreneurs. They want to be people that are remembered for what they've done. But now I, I believe we're in a microwave society where a lot of people lose track of sight when it comes down to how much legwork it really takes and the timeline it takes to really build a brand and really build a business. Because I don't know if it's just social media or it's what they see on TV or it, it can be a plethora of things, but uh, the youth nowadays or the millennials or the baby boomers, the generation X, a lot of them are failing to understand how difficult it is to actually build your brand and how much time, money, heart, dedication, um, you know, everything. It takes so much time. And, you know, it's good to have conversations like this with different people that need it. And like Scott, like you said, bringing it back to the community and being able to expound on things that people may need to help them get into whatever they want to get into because some people just don't know if you don't know and you're ignorant to it you know it's you're, you're gonna you're gonna fall to the wayside and this is not a business that you really want to fall to the wayside on just like any other uh in in marketing same concept there's a lot of people that try to get in the marketing game and they may not know enough or they may make one mistake and that that relationship is severed and then they 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 lose themselves so you really have to know yourself first, understand why. The why is very important in any business. Having a purpose and making sure you're consistent to your why and why you're doing it, who you're doing it for, and what you're trying to, um, uh, 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 a long lasting legacy for your brand and yourself. I think that's super important that people realize that before anything. I love that. I got to tell you, man, that it's so big. Your why has to be so big that your how just is not even a question. You're so spot on about right. that. Legacy is so tree for engineering. Start with the end in mind. Start from a place mm -hmm. of victory. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You're mm -hmm. You know me, I'm all about the entrepreneur mindset and your why has to be there because without your why, you won't have the strength to continue when things get tough. Your why yeah. You through any hardship in any you know situation within your business. So as long as your why is strong, 
you cannot fail because you're going to bounce back to right. anything that, that you consider a failure and you're going to be stronger because that why is so important to you. So before we uh, close out, one last question about the industry. Is this the right time to get into the alcoholic beverage industry? How's the market? Like, is this something that we should, like people should try to jump into or is it something that you guys should be, you know, trying to plan your exit strategy or, or somewhere in the middle? What's it looking like right now? Should people be excited about getting into this industry? What's going on? Well, first, there's no perfect time to do anything. So I'll start with that. There's never a perfect right. time. You always hear that. It makes me laugh when people say that, but it is what it is. But if there ever was an amazing time to do it, it is now because what people don't know behind the scenes, distributors are going through hell. Everyone's merging and suing each other and fighting each other and trying to see who has good market share. When you're not with the big distributors, which I worked for for 10 years, and people were shocked that I didn't go there. When you're not with those guys, you're on the outside just watching them battle and fight and lose market share and lose one market to another, and one state can't sell this brand. It's crazy out there. So right now is the perfect time if there is one because there's so much bedlam going on right now that we're just, I mean, y'all have feel it. we're winning on this island. We're just kind of doing what we're doing, going through, gaining accounts. We're, we gain stadiums. We gain major markets. I've taken major accounts from the major brands because they wouldn't transition from one distributor to another. And while they were up top arguing about who was going to maintain what, I was just out there in the streets with my team working and taking those major accounts from them. And I've never let it go because my guys are still in those accounts. So right now is an amazing time because it's, it's crazy out there. And I love it. Right? I was born and raised in Harlem. So I love the craziness in the streets. Like, this is normal for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Joe, I think you hit on this earlier in the call that you're really nailing it out. And that trend is back to consume international. Uh, Coviello, I think you're talking about a lot of the complexity of that. And, and that's disappearing. Shipping costs are coming down. UPS, DHL, and uh, FedEx have all delayed their cars, their airplanes, their ground transportation. It's opened up to a direct food market in the 51 countries around the world. China doesn't have this for wine, as I haven't been. You know, the the other aspect, coconut water, no problem. But you know, Joe, I think you were about how you set up the aspects of shipping, those type of things, but. I mean, there is a big market out there, and it's called the world. And um, when people associate with really kick out, like, you know, the, the wine, the wine, tequila, coconut, I just want to buy it. And buy it the store. I just want to go in and have you ship it. Keep shipping it if I like it because I'm drinking it. Oh, yeah. That's great. great. So we're going to wrap and, uh, this. Yeah. Pretty soon. It's very, it's very powerful. So uh, before we so, yeah, let me uh, let me let me let me let me say this, Daryl, before yeah. um, we cut out too. Like um, you know, uh, realize this too. Regardless of the timing, always understand that there is always a need for our marketplace. Always, because think of think of how alcohol or or even you know. Um, coconut water you're always going to have a downturn to something as bad as it sounds you're always going to have a crisis and there's always going to be a solution for that crisis so our industry is one of the most powerful industries in the world because people are always going to want to celebrate there's always going to be good things to celebrate about and then there's always going to be bad things that people go through and you're going to have the ups and downs but we win in every single aspect of that you know, we're not like the stock market where we're down and oh, it's bad and then up, it's great. You know, we're, we, we catch the wave on every single aspect. So always keep that in mind as well, too. We're always winning. Love that. That's great. That's great insight, man. Cool. Before we cut out, we're going to uh, go around the room and everyone's going to give us one piece of parting guidance. Um, your best tip for anyone looking to get into the industry um, then please give us a way to reach out to you or give us some contact information that um, you can share with viewers. Um, let's go in the same order we started. Uh, Frank and Jessica, Joe, Scott, and Coviello. Yeah. Um, I would say our piece of advice, so, you know, it's similar to how we started. So we found something in the industry that was missing or something that people wanted but just couldn't find. And for us, it was a mixer. Uh, that we wanted to see at the bars and clubs. So I think when you can find a li like that little space, and I think right now it is a pretty saturated market, but there's always so many different types of flavors and ways to formulate and, you know, different variations of just everything. If you get, get really like 
creative about it. If you just find this white space um, where there's room for you to just squeeze yourself in, um, from there you can just really grow, um, grow, grow big. How can we reach? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. Um, yeah, so you could, uh, I mean, you, please follow us on Instagram at Electric Coco. So we are a, a new, a new, new company. We just finished our Kickstarter campaign. So we ran a 45 day campaign to fund the initial uh, order and distribution of our coconut water. And we met our goal, actually exceeded it uh, over 100%. Uh, thank you. So, um, so we are now working with our supplier in Vietnam. We are placing our order and it'll be here in the new year. So um, follow us on Instagram just to get up to date on like just the product and announcements and new news. We'll ha we're having a launch party, um, Daryl, like you said, in February, March. So if you follow us, you'll be able to just join us on this journey and uh, just get to know us. On Instagram and on Facebook is just at Electric Coco. Simple as that. Great. You have a website, right? Yep, yep. electricoco.com. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Yo? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's simple for me. The one I said earlier was never a perfect time. That's, it's a couple of different things I tell people when it comes to liquor. And one of the main ones is don't ever let anyone's words dictate your actions. Because I'm the guy that people said you can't do with less than $3 million. You can't expand without this. You need a bigger network. You need to go to the big distributors. I literally tell every single person, you need that. I don't need any of that stuff. I'm mean, going to show you. It took me two years to make it from, from my mind to reality without any major investments, any major backing, any major companies. I even designed a bottle myself for one of my best friends on my sofa. I didn't have lawyers. My office space was my apartment for two years. That's why we filmed it. And to throw a kicker in that most people don't know, I'm a single father. So I was raising my son the whole time while doing it. Mm. But that leads me to my next thing is that there's always a reason not to do something and most people find it. Your girlfriend broke up with you. Your money isn't right. It's raining outside. Nobody cares. When you can't pay your bills, you're the one that can't pay your bills. So you got to do whatever it takes. Once, once it's in here, you got to let it out. You got to go all in. I never slowed down. I mean, we haven't slowed down yet. And from that same guy who told me I need $3.5 million to start, he's still reaching out. Now that I'm in three markets without that major money and doing everything that we're doing. So would you believe in yourself? I mean, you just keep going. You just go, go, go. Like, we're nonstop. I have an yes. amazing team around me. So the one thing I'm going to take more credit for than anything I do is I built the most amazing team around me of guys who work just as hard as I do, not harder. So when I Kobe Yellow said he met one of my guys, there's more of them. Like, it's going to be swarms and swarms of people nonstop just taking over the streets. And we just started in three markets. It's a lot more coming in the next few months. And for the last party, I'm coming to see you guys. I'll be out there. We'll get each other's information. I'm bringing some yeah. Yada to you. But yeah. I mean, the social media and the website are all the same. Yada Tequila. It's Y-A-D-E Tequila. Real key on every bottle, as I said. Had to throw that in. Just feel free to reach out. Any questions, any thoughts, anybody out there? If you don't reach out to me and ask me questions, you're a fool. Because I'm giving you the opportunity to ask me something and me to help you for free. I don't want anything from anybody. I'm, I'm a karma guy. I pay it forward and it's worked out for me my whole life. That's pretty much my thing. Facts. I respect the grind, man. You, I saw you on LinkedIn. You commented on one of my posts. And I was like, let me, let me talk to you, man. Because you, you had something in you that I wanted to definitely get out into the world. So I appreciate you being on the call, brother. Definitely. Thanks for it, man. Scott. I just love everything that was said here and um, by everyone. Um, just the, the power of the closing statements here. Um, you know, one of the one of the, I think the biggest things is is something you can't forget about. Any day it lives with you again and again. If you can't forget about it, quit. And when you know you're on the right path, you do what you do, and that can travel in any business and whatever. And just really, Joe, what you came across is using that Harlem New scrapper mentality that exists in everyone on this call and it's that eye of the tiger that you know what i got something to do i got something to prove and i can do it better and make life better. that's just that's something you can't teach in school you can't learn but anything other than just the hard knocks of life and um uh, building into the scrapper method you know i think one of the things that entrepreneurs after you've built several things some of the funnest part of building and um, it's all about the baby. Um, it's all about the list as well. And the most important thing in all of that is the people you do it with. And you surround yourself with great people. It's really hard to understand what work is and fun is because it all becomes one. And uh, uh, building teams, uh, Joe, I uh, um, um, resonate with you on that. And how anyone can get 
touch with me. For everyone on this call, I would love to connect. There's some things that I can do for you guys, and I don't need anything for it, um, other than I want to know your story, and we can follow up on that, because uh, we all rise on the same side, and that's not anything that want any money. There's a special relationship, and Daryl, you put that together. How you get in touch with me at winevestmodel.com. Um, just hit the website, and however you want to connect via LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or whatever. Um, it's just easy to hit our social media tab there. Um, but for all of you, I'm a LinkedIn addict. I love it. And uh, please connect with me there personally. Um, and, and other than that, that's my 10 cents worth. Thanks, guys and ladies. Hey, thank you, Scott, man. It's awesome. been great knowing you via LinkedIn. Awesome. And I'm so glad we got to meet in person uh, last yeah. week in New York City. So mm -hmm. that was great, man. I really appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Coviello? Um, my closing, yeah. So my closing is uh, always know yourself first before you get into anything. Because if you don't know exactly who you are as a person and what your tolerance level is to any industry you get into, you're 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 gonna you're gonna hit a wall. You know, as entrepreneurs, we deal with the ins and outs of just things that some people would crumble under, right? Uh, the best quote that somebody ever told me about being an entrepreneur is you're pretty much diving headfirst off of a cliff and building the plane in the air while you're still falling. <laughs> so wow. when you understand, yeah, when you understand that and just put into perspective that there's no way to fail because your own failure is literally in your own mind, in your heart. You know, just be persistent. Know everything that you do. Do it with a purpose. Do it with a why. And you're you're on the you're on the, you're on the stage. You're on the stage at all times. So always conduct yourself properly as well, and never be afraid to take an opportunity when you see it. Don't ever hesitate. The minute you hesitate, you'll lose. Timing is almost everything, but it's timing, who you are as a person and what you're looking for at that moment in time. So never have a fear on any type of path you're, you're on. And uh, you can find Amour Genevieve. It's French, so it's A-M-O-U-R Genevieve, G-E-N-E-V-E -E -E, on Instagram. And also the website is Amour, B-L-U, B -L -U, forever, dot com. And that's also the same on Facebook, Amour Genevieve. And uh, I'm bringing it into the United States by November 25th, December, early December. So looking to definitely uh, connect with every single one of you. And uh, it's been a pleasure. And also everybody out there in the uh, pods here, keep it, uh, keep it pushing and keep the, the, the power a lot. Thank you, Kobe. Kobe, yeah, it was so great to, uh, to have you on the call. I mean, you, you're grinding, man. I saw you at the Gary Vee wine event. And you were out there networking, showing off your blue wine, and <laughs> really stood out, man. Because, like you said, there's no better substitute than perseverance. You've got to go out there. You got to grind. I really appreciate everyone for being on the call today for the hashtag. Let's talk about it. It's been great talking about the challenges of the alcoholic beverage industry, drink or drank. And I really appreciate you guys. Take it easy. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. Cheers. Talk to you guys. Good night, guys. Talk to you guys soon for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice meeting you, Joe. See ya. Thank you.